communicate with in the hood. They can see us, but not hear us. That's a lot for room. I'd like to call the Green Lake Township Board of Trustees meeting to order for a special meeting, workshop, budget workshop, April 24th, 2023, at 3.30 p.m. Judy, can you do a roll call, please? Merrick. Here. Beyondo is absent. McDonald. Biganowski. Here. Kramer here. West. Here. And Radke. Here. Four. Thank you. Next item would be pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the Thank you. Our voices, put them on mute, vibrate off would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the next item would be the approval of the agenda. Uh, there is one item to be removed, and that would be the Road Brian 2023 contract review. We got that straight out with the Road Commission. We were all set on that. So I'd like to remove Road Brian 2023. Mike, can we adapt the agenda as presented with the exception of the Road Brian, or with removing Road Brian's contract? We have a motion by Merrick, supported by Kramer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Next item on our agenda is public comment. You to rise, walk to the podium, state your name, address of residence, and keep your comments to three minutes. Any public comment? Seeing none, we're moving on. New business, Rob's Cars Networks Northwest is here to do a little presentation in regards to the MPO. Oh, metropolitan, metropolitan planning area bound. We did have a overhead, but we included the PowerPoint packet in the board's agenda. So with that, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here this evening. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, my name is Rob Carson. I'm the Community Development Director of Network Northwest. And I'm, uh, I'm a neighbor here. I'm right over the line in Manitou County and uh, northern part of Marilla Township. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I know you've got a packed agenda. Um, so just a little bit of history. Uh, going back to 1988, there was a task force developed to uh, basically look at an east-west bypass around Traverse City. Closer to 1990, that morphed into what was called PT Talus. That was recommended by the Michigan Department of Transportation at that time because they felt that um, the Traverse City, Greater Traverse City area was going to be achieving urbanized area designation. That obviously did not occur until 2020, but just prior to that, in 2015, PC Talus morphed into what's called the Traverse Transportation Coordinating Initiative, PTCI. In the 2020 uh, decennial census, um, the Greater Traverse City area did achieve urbanized area designation. What that is is basically a threshold of 50,000 residents within an established boundary, um, including census tracts, and that uh, mandates the establishment of a metropolitan planning organization. Um, the, the last census count, count for the urbanized area had about 57,000 individuals. So we were notified December 29th of 2022 that the urbanized area had been achieved and that we needed to move through the steps to uh, designate a metropolitan planning organization in kind of federal statute. So what is a metropolitan planning organization? It's basically an open forum for transportation decision-making processes that brings together all local units of government, agencies, and uh, citizens. Metropolitan planning organization is designed to carry out plans and processes for transportation planning it basically looks at projects and alternatives for the metropolitan planning area and then prioritizes them and selects them for implementation through this process of um, plans that are to be developed at the time. Um, it's required for all urbanized areas of 50,000 or greater, uh, which we just uh, achieved. And it must uh, continue the three C process transportation planning, comprehensive, cooperative 
and continuous. So there's a map in your packet that displays the traffic city urbanized area. You'll see the urbanized census tracts are in purple. Um, that map, you'll see the gaps between the different urbanized area census tracts, those are called skips and jumps. That is a methodology that the Census Bureau uses for determining urbanized areas. It's extremely useful to um, geographic locations such as where we live, as, as well as mountainous areas or other coastal areas. And the reason being, we have too many lake streams and wetlands that do not facilitate development. That if it had to be a continuous boundary without any skips or jumps, it would be very difficult for us to achieve an urbanized area designation. And the purpose of an urbanized area designation is once you get that in a residence with any single location, obviously it has impact on the transportation network, which we are all experiencing if you're a commuter currently around the Traverse City area, Greater Traverse area. So you'll see, obviously, um, inclusion of uh, census tract in the northern part of Green Lake Township. The next uh, map in, or that's in your packet is called the Metropolitan Planning Area Boundary and it's recommended by MDOT. The purpose of recommending the Metropolitan Planning Area Boundary is to incorporate all local civil divisions that are um, likely to see urbanized area increase within the next 20 years. That's why Green Lake Township is being included and you also see on the other side of Whitewater Township. They do not have an urbanized area. You have a very small census tract that has some current, but it's envisioned that you're going to continue to see development pressures. Um, the Metropolitan Planning Area Boundary incorporates all local units of government that you see there Whitewater, Acme, Charter Township, Beef Bay, Charter City, Peninsula Township, Bingham Township, Charter Township, Elmwood, Morgan Township, Blair Township, and Green Lake Township. This is what is recommended by MDOT to be the planning area boundary. What is important about the planning area boundary is that when I get to the funding and the trans trans transportation plan discussion that's upcoming, the metropolitan planning area is where transportation projects can be included. And so anywhere within that MPA boundary, the funding that is allotted from the federal government and the additional grants that the MPO is eligible for can place different transportation alternatives and projects within those local units of government that it can occur outside of. So there's a map in there that displays that there's 13 MPOs on the southern part of the state would be the first north will be number 14. Uh, the typical MPO structure is a policy board and then served by an executive committee. You know, they, they must uh, operate within the laws of the Open Meeting Act. Um, very similar to how a township board or a village council or city council manages itself. Um, the executive committee sets uh, sketch or sets items for the agenda for the entire policy board. Under the policy board, there is a technical committee. That technical committee is comprised of professionals from local units of government, transportation agencies and transit agencies. So likely it's typically planners and engineers to serve in that role. They are advising to the full policy board. The policy board member membership itself is typically comprised of uh, chief elected officials from the local units of government if they desire to be involved, um, which is one important aspect that is completely up to each local unit of government to determine if they want to be involved and at what level they want to be involved. The metropolitan planning area boundary can encompass a local unit of government without that local unit of government choosing to be, choosing to have a seat on that policy board. That way, transportation projects can still be completed within the local unit, local unit of government, but what it does is it does not allow that local unit of government to have a seat at the table and be a part of the decision making process in the legislative. Um, that is served also by a Citizen Advisory Committee. Currently, the structure of TTCI is missing the Citizen Advisory Committee. We will, to conform to the federal regulations, be establishing a committee or the policy board will be establishing a committee. Um, other special ad hoc committees can be assigned as well. That would be particularly if there was a transportation project that you wanted to see happen in your local unit of government. 
you may have gathered the representatives from the media who would gauge and hopefully in some government and maybe the road commission, if it's a road project or a Trump data, if it's a transit project, and have a smaller committee to focus on that specific project and feed that information to the full housing board in Texas. That is all served by MPO professional staff. Currently, Networks Northwest has been um, serving as professional staff to the Traffic Transportation Coordinating Initiative. That has gone back many, many years from my understanding to prior when it was the Northwest Michigan Council of Governments. Um, it is anticipated that Networks Northwest will continue to serve in that capacity. Um, the staff of Networks Northwest are not the decision making body by any means. They strictly are fair and impartial professional staff that serve at the will of the MPO Policy Board. The funding that comes down from the federal government will allow the MPO Policy Board to hire a senior level transportation specialist, which will fit into the Community Development Department structure, but they will answer wholly to the MPO Policy Board, which will be completely autonomous from the Networks Northwest Board. So I kind of covered the Policy Board Committee and the, the Planning Technical Committee. Um, the MPO functions, they, they set a fair and impartial decision-making uh, body for all transportation projects. Um, they evaluate all the different alternatives. They develop the three levels of plans. A long-range transportation plan looking out to 20 years is required. And then a transportation improvement program, which is a four to five-year plan, is also required. And then a unified work plan is required. How this all works is the 20 year plan is very blue sky. Any alternative and all alternatives that can be um, thought of for transportation improvements within the planning area boundary are put into the single document. It encompasses a lot of public input, as well as input from our local units of government, the transportation agencies, and transit agencies. The transportation improvement program, which is the four to five year plan, pulls out the prioritized projects. 20 year plan and puts them into the four and five year plan and it puts actual um, fiscal numbers for those individual projects. They need to be fiscally constrained to the funds that are available of the MPO. And what that means is uh, funds that are directly um, provided to the MPO by the federal government, as well as what would be available if grants were submitted to um, several. Um, pools of funding that are only available to MPO um, across the nation. The Unified Work Program then takes the prioritized projects from the four to five year plan and puts them in a single one to two year plan. So those are the projects that will actually be implemented on a one to two year basis and that is updated every year, that plan is. The four to five year plan is updated every two to three years, the 20 year plan is updated every five to 10 years. So it's a continuous planning process, moving projects through, prioritizing them, implementing them, finding funding to help implement them, and then moving on to the next one. There is a strong requirement for public input, which most uh, project or most planning processes have um, as required by the federal government. So here you'll see I just spoke to three of them. And um, the funding implications are currently uh, the small urban program, uh, Traverse City, receives 385,000, that will completely be replaced. There's currently 23,000 in SPR funds for the coordinated planning grant that comes to um, Networks Northwest to facilitate and manage the current PTCI program. Um, basically provides professional staff capacity to serve PTCI meeting for years and years and years. And we handle a number of transportation programs for MDOT that that helps facilitate currently. After the MPO designation, that 385,000 is increased to 1 million. That 1 million can be spent anywhere within that, net, that metropolitan planning area boundary. It doesn't have to be within those urbanized center tracks, just within the planning area boundary. 228,000 in consolidated planning grant funds are then allotted as well to the MPO Policy Board. That allows them to hire additional transportation planners, the senior level transportation specialists in particular. It also helps to, um, the, the MP will have to be served by a total of three full-time staff members in different capacities. 
So accounting staff is needed. Obviously, you need to meet federal requirements for audits on a yearly basis. There are grants to be written. There is grant reporting and um, progress reporting and financial reporting that is handled by accounting staff. Um, there is IT staff that is necessary for handling all technical capacities, building an office space, conference room, all of this type of funding helps to facilitate those actions. At any, one, any point in time over the course of the year, I anticipate six to seven different individuals in Network Northwest applying a certain percent of their time to capacity the MPO policy, policy board. One of those individuals will be committing 100% of their staff time as a senior transportation specialist. The um, $120,000 in carbon reduction fund, that funding is made available. It can be spent on a number of things from mass transit, additional bus stops, that sort of thing, to um, uh, light signal timing along roadways so vehicles aren't sitting as long, um, to non motorized, so those bike paths, um, sidewalks, crosswalks, those sorts of things. Anything that reduces the time. The important thing to remember here is the rural task force. The rural task force which we have several of them throughout the region. Your rural task force is comprised of Wheeling, Albany, and Grand Garden County representatives. The projects and the funding for the rural task force do not change. So the funding level that is currently available to the RTS will not change, even if a portion of that community is included in the metropolitan planning area boundary. What does occur is the rural task force funding, task force funding cannot be spent within the urbanized census tract, so that purple, the census tract purple map that we showed, it can be spent outside of those areas with still within the metropolitan planning area boundary. But the policy, the MPO policy board then has to authorize that project. How this is working around the state of Michigan is it's basically been a rubber stamp deal. If the RTF says, we want to see this project implemented in this location, practices across the state as the MPO policy board gets it says yep we agree stamps it and goes on and RTF continues as it has before. So the funding implication wise there is no net loss there is quite a bit to gain in terms of monetary um, commitment for transportation projects. So the MPO timeline the timeline was originally we were expected to hear urbanized area designation, I'm sure you're all aware of the way the census data was in being released. The urbanized area designation, we anticipated hearing back in October 2021. That was continually delayed three months, and it was delayed six months, and it was delayed an additional three months. We did not find out until December 29th of 2022. So the timeline that we had of about a year and a half to move through this process was suggested to about 14. So now we're kind of expediting moving forward with the community meetings that we're shown here at the meeting with all the communities in the Mass Metropolitan Planning Area recommended boundaries from MDOT and basically explaining the process and what the options are. From here, we are going to, we have a, on May 9th, we have a PPCI um, policy board meeting. At that meeting, we'll be asking the policy board to set two special meetings in June. Those June meetings will be for negotiation and discussion of an intergovernmental agreement. So what's, I've provided a resolution of support to you. That resolution of support does not commit your township to anything, financially or otherwise. It does not commit you to a seat on the MPO policy board. Basically what that is is a checkbox for the Michigan Department of Transportation to know that you have been approached and have had a presentation and discussion in regard to the Metropolitan Planning Organization and whether you want to seat at that table for those negotiations and discussion for establishment of the MPO policy board. Completely at your discretion. If you choose to have that seat, you can get up and leave at any time. There's absolutely no commitment. What the discussion will entail is um, how the MPO policy board is comprised, what the membership is of that board, what the voting rights would be at that board and how dues would be paid. There isn't a requirement of dues that need to be met for a local match. It does not state anywhere who has to pay what in federal requirements. The um, status quo across the state is handled um, a few different ways, but the status quo really is to have 
the transportation agencies, so the road commissions and the transit agency carry the brunt of the views. Then the local units of government that elect to be part of that policy board typically have a nominal due that they pay of $500 to $1,500 per year. And it's completely at their discretion. So the negotiations will talk about all of those different items. We'll be bringing the best management practices and recommendations that are occurring from other metropolitan planning organizations across the state for everybody to be able to discuss. What we need to do is we need to come to some consensus by those meetings in June or very early July because even if your representative say you want to sit at the table and sit down and hammer out an agreement, that agreement still has to come back before Green Lake Township with full board approval. If the full board does not authorize that agreement, then the agreement cannot move forward to the Ampeel Policy Board to fully um, adopt it and then take it to the governor's desk for signature. So it is quite a bit of um, discussing on who is going to be involved and in what capacity you want to be involved because we have a very short time frame to get this to the governor's desk. We need to get it to her by October 1st, which really means we need to get it there probably by September 1st. So, thank you. Yeah, we have a sample resolution or fact that has been uh, resolution has been amended to reflect in the event we adopt uh, this order uh, resolution. I have questions, Mark. May yeah, David. A uh, couple questions. One is those those figures you gave about funding are those annual figures? Those are annual. All right. Now, explain to me more specifically the the bodies with authority and decision making uh, ability to and how, how that works. You got advisory boards and we got all these three different tiered of... Yeah, so you, the MPO policy board is the actual governing entity. But what they, authority do they... If they say, hey, we want a bridge across the boardman, do they have the ability to make a bridge across the board? They, they can support the development... Put this way, they can support the development of a bridge across the boardman because, I got to put it that way, because the bridge can be $150 million. Yeah. Physically, constrained. physically constrained means that they can't plan for something unless they're gonna we're gonna be able to have to be. so let's say it's something smaller. I mean, do, do they have binding decision making authority over all the municipalities in the planning organization? They have binding authority over transportation projects within the metropolitan planning area. So yes. if we all right, let, me, let him answer the damn question. <laughs> So if you guys decide to put all your asphalt money east and we well, like, like, whatever the, the MPO, the MPO, the, 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 the policy board, if they decided to do all that, they get to do it. I mean, there's no that that's their decision making body, and that's that's it. They are. This is yeah. This is the regional decision making body for all transportation projects. Then what would be the no, if they spend the money? It's definitively Even their decision to spend the money. And, This is this is this is the one thing. This is going to happen whether Green Lake Township decides to be a part of it. This is federally required. It's going to recommend the MPA boundary. That's probably going to get adopted. Whether you want to be a participant on the policy board and part of this discussion, your community is going to be captured. You keep saying that's what I'm saying. You keep saying well, you want to be part of the discussion. That's a whole different thing than actually having a vote, make it happen, or not happen. We're all part of the discussion. We're all saying well, that's, that's the point. Seat as a policy board member and be included in a governmental agreement, then you will have a vote. Right. Having a vote is different than having a discussion. We can have a discussion with Bubba, but he, he don't get a vote. He likes one thing better than the next. The whole discussion is bring about what's going to occur in June because there is not an MPO policy. All right, so board. which so the MPF, MPO policy board, not TTIC, that's a separate organization. It'll be, it'll be TTCI. Was, They're going to share the same name. There's the same seat. CTCR. So it's just, just the one. Okay. Thank you. You've got the policy board and you've got the executive committee. Yes. Who makes up the executive committee? What is their. It's the elected officers of the policy board. So you have a chair, vice chair. 
to be equal. So they're going to have to be part of the MGO policy in order to be on the executive committee. Yes. And the professional staff is whoever this board decides to hire, whether it be Network Northwest or Joe Smith's consulting. Um, well, it can't, it's got to be a unit of government. So it can't, it can't be a private entity. You know, federal funds, they got to go fund it. So Dallas Northwest is the Northwest Michigan Council of Governments, or sadly, under the 19th uh, Regional Planning Act of 1945 for special unit government. And the recommendation is to see it with the regional planning entity because that's the model for the state of Michigan. But could there be, not saying that was going to happen, could there be another organization, another unit of government or whatever that ends up being a professional staff? Or does it have to be Networks Northwest at this point? If there's another regional planning entity that covers multiple counties, it could be that regional. Uh, how long have you been with the Networks Northwest? Three years. And you said it's, it's a fair and impartial. A lot of us didn't ever think that. It's Sorry, a DC Palace. <laughs> Some of these prior organizations we, we kind of felt were black holes where money went and we never know what the hell happened. Yes, Mr. McDonald. So if we in the township join, then that would allow for the federal funds to be spent in Green Lake Township? So the, the federal funds can be spent in any portion of the metropolitan planning area boundary whether or not those local units of government want to join on and have a seat in the policy to be a decision maker. It was being recommended by MDOT. If that's where they see the brunt of where we're going to need transportation projects going up 20 years from now, and that includes Green Lake Township, it includes Whitewater Township, it includes Bingham Township, it includes Polaris Township, which are kind of on the outskirts of greater traffic. Proposed resolution, and you grabbed it as a resolution of support, but this is really a resolution to officially form a committee for some of the statutes. It's it's to sit down and have a discussion forming intermunicipality committee to develop an inter intergovernmental agreement. That's kind of the way it reads, and it says we're agreeing to form some type of a unit for prescribed by statute. It says the inter intermunicipality committee right. establishment of the intergovernment agreement. You know, but the, the statements in there don't Number bind five. you to a financial commitment or or basically a seat in that intermunicipality committee. Kind of, it's just a check. Yeah. Number seven of the front page, seven whereas. This resolution to join each intermunicipality and does not obligate Green Lake Township to any dues of the financial municipality or committee. I get that part, but in the whereas of the, the last paragraph says we're uh, by the resolution we're agreeing to form the committee. One little concern is there's supposed to be some bylaws attached to this resolution that aren't. If we were to pass this at our next board meeting, would that be timely enough? Yeah, that'd be fine. That'd be fine. I mean, you, if you're if you're interested, you can still CPCI is an open meeting. Anybody is welcome to public or public comment section. I just let them go around there, Joe. Yeah, don't yeah, don't let people don't in. Don't let any <laughs> So what this, in the essence, what this is saying is, we're going to have money spent in this area whether we have a vote on it or a voice in the game. MDOT. Yeah, well, we would we have a voice, but we pass a resolution that says the bylaws are attached. 
Well, it sounds like there's an intergovernmental agreement that they're calling an intercommunity agreement instead that we haven't seen either. Well, the, the intergovernmental agreement isn't, it's going to be for the new size of the community. Well, you still should have a draft or a form. That's where the devil is in the details and the voting and the dues and all that stuff. That's well, yeah. Well, that's speak to what the voting is used to. It's not on me or any of my staff to make that determination. Everything is sitting at the table and giving all the information to the elected officials and representatives of the transportation agencies and transit agencies. And stuff. We are out of that discussion. Yeah, Here's what the best practices are. Everybody needs to make a determination. A lot of those things won't be determined until unless there's, well, there will be a committee form, whether we have a voice in the committee or a policy board in that regards there. We don't have that committee yet to bring back this resolution. The spirit. It says support, but the language is a little down. stronger than support, like Pat said. Yeah. Well, let's sit down. Okay, are we going to have uh, to answer the bylaws, the bylaws are on our website that TTTI operates under currently. And I have a draft that is going to the um, policy board that has two recommended pieces. In it. There's going to be a third one to get there and discuss with them. But the two pieces that are being recommended for, the, to, for revisions are there's a statement of communities of interest that are being incorporated into the bylaws. Communities that have passed the resolution already, I place their names into the bylaws in red to have those amended to include those communities. So if you choose Green Lake Township, we place them there as well. Also, the, the Citizen Advisory Committee that currently TTCI does not have established it is not in the bylaws. I place some language for establishment of Citizen Advisory Committee and or holding of substantial public input sessions on a yearly basis for them to build policy. Um, the other pieces that there's a number of other things that will have to be amended in those bylaws once the MPO is established because it'll have to speak to the um, procedure for dues and the voting and all those sorts of things that we currently don't have um, according to what the membership is. We don't know who's going to be a member. We don't. It's, there's a lot of going of like chicken or egg type scenario that's occurring right now where there, the federal government is dictating these things through MDOT to us, and it's kind of, what do, what do we do first? We can't amend the bylaws until we have resolutions. If we have different units of government passing resolutions at different paces, at, you know what I mean, on a week-to-week -week basis, and so it's, it's trying to keep pace with exactly where each unit of government is and what their stance is on it for me to try to keep up with those edits. But if you go to the Netless Northwest website under transportation, there is the, a link for TTCI, and there's abundant information on that. There's all the past agendas, has all the meeting minutes, has the bylaws, all that information. We could use those current bylaws and catch up later with the changes. Yes. So, Margaret, it's my yes. understanding that this gives us an opportunity to set a table and vote on how it's going to be set up. Yeah. If we don't adopt this resolution. This is going to happen whether we want to or not. Or there's something that can happen within our, our township as far as transportation. Yeah. And or if we, if we wanted to be able to cast a vote or help set this, this TTCI up, we really need to have someone at that table who can not only have a voice, but also a vote. And I'll be quite honest with you, I'm encouraging each of the local units to participate because there's it's being voiced from a lot of individuals that, well, what are, what is my vote carried? The vote's going to carry for Traverse City and those communities right there, Garfield Township, East Bay. The more local units that join in from outside of the city, the more support you can have for your local entities. Like your traffic impact from Green Lake and Blair and Long Lake. You're, you know what I mean? Your improvements out here are going to improve it for those residents as opposed to the improvements that occur in Trevor City. So having representation from everybody as voting mem members is going to give more weight to the how we read it. Right, because what Blair does or what the M for MPA in Blair 
foot impact would be like a long leg and et cetera there. So we'd want to be in the committee set up stage. So where in the resolution does it say we can say, okay, this isn't working for us, we're out. I'm not a player and I don't see that language. It doesn't mean it's not in the it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not committed. You're not committed. Financial responsibility, your name is not in the intergovernmental agreement. So what for the for the policy board, I will have simple language for for the intergovernmental agreement. That will then be discussed for um, additions at those June meetings, whatever the voting is, who the membership is, and how that's represented. If the units of government that select not to be a part of that MPO policy board at those meetings say, hey, you know what, this isn't for us, we don't want to be a participant, your name will never go in the intergovernmental agreement. Because if it did go in the intergovernmental agreement, that intergovernmental agreement has to come back to you as a full board to be motioned and approved prior to going to the policy board and then to the governor. But Pat, look at the title on the resolution. I just figured it out. That this intermunicipal intermunicipality committee, it's it's kind of like a formation committee, is what he's saying. It's gonna have a temporary life and it'll be substituted out once the official thing gets signed by everybody. You said the first meeting is May 9th? Yes. Our next board meeting isn't until May 8th. You don't have to have this approved to be, we're not gonna be doing the discussions until the June meeting. So you can have a representative at the CTCI meeting on the 9th and not having had passed the resolution. I don't want to, I don't want to withhold your participation from a meeting if you haven't passed the resolution. This is really comes into play for those June meetings when you're sitting down to the negotiation. Dave, would I be what you saying if this we're not agreeing to join the under no, we're just it's a support it agreement, it's just is what it will and then if if we Bring that whoever brings that back to the board, we can go. We don't want to have anything to do with it. Yeah, once we see the final draft, we can say no, but this is getting us to the table. So, adopting this resolution, you don't see any real problem. I don't see any problem. I make a motion to adopt resolution 04242023.1. Be willing to remove the language in number four that says an attached tier two? Sure. Second. Motion by Merritt to Port McDonald to adopt resolution 04242023.1 with removal of uh, what line was that, Pat? Number four. Pick out the entire four. Well, no, because it's the bylaws for the rest of four. Oh, the bylaws. And attached. Just and attached here, too. Anybody have any questions? Gary. What about here? All the townships have somebody there. What do you need a citizen? Yeah, so um, we do have we have several language changes in here. Now, what I'm going to recommend to the MPO Policy Board because it's completely at their discretion how they form it is to not actually have a a to citizen advisory committee because what they can do instead of say, hey, we're going to host four weekend per session this year. And that's where the professional staff capacity can come in to help it is then you're not having a single voice on a citizen advisory committee. We're going out into local units of government and hosting public input sessions, drop-in sessions where people can come give input on any vehicular transportation, any transit, any non-motorized and then we can take all that public input, provide it to the policy board, and it'll help guide those planning meetings. The other way to do it is some MPOs do have appointed citizen advisory that are kind of like a planning commission for the township board, and that they're appointed for two years. I don't think that's correct, to be quite honest with you. So I, I would recommend that we just do public input. Then you made the comment once this board got organized, formed, that MDOT couldn't come in and do any projects. They, they can do that. They they have have what's what's going to make this board 
any more educated to what needs doing. Because that guy has not seen any more before. So. Say that again. That guy has seen some before. It was just like a highway. So I don't say it right. Typically, they're in a non voting role. They act, they're on the council board, but they typically don't vote. They're just advising. Any other questions on the okay. The only thing that would concern me is unknown downsides to being in this, losing funding, grants, any kind of other weird unintended consequences. You can't think of anything? No, what I, what I think of, so this is, so there's four pools of funding, and I, forgive me, I don't have the names. One's like a, um, Transportation Economic Development Fund. Another one is um, increases safe tax to school funding well because right now it's like two hundred thousand. I think it increases the tax or something like that. And then there's two other funds that I can't think of. But what it does is it actually opens up if Green Lake Township specifically had a transportation project and you wanted to have her in your township, you could say, you know what, we want to apply for a grant through the MPO Policy Board. And apply for the grant for a transportation specific project. And the funds right now aren't available to anybody that's not an MPO. Is there your Well, I was kind of thinking the other way around. Let's say it's the, the safe route to schools, whatever. And, and we could apply for that as Green Lake stand alone and get it. But now we're part of an MPO. We got to go through the MPO. And the money goes to the MPO. And then we got to beg to get the money back at Green Lake. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's not. That's not how I understand it works. Okay. So yeah, I, it, what it because so there would be MOUs figured out as well that the policy board. That's exactly the type of language that needs to be in there to protect the units of government and the transportation agencies that are a part of the policy board. So that if a project is brought forth um, to be applied for by Greenland Township and with all grants, you know, there's usually a match commitment if. Green Lake Township is meeting the match commitment for the transportation project. There needs to be MOUs in place that the policy board cannot dictate if that grant is received, that it can be spent on a different project or prioritized elsewhere. And from what I'm familiar with, I write a lot of grants, particularly with federal grants and state grants, sometimes with the federal grants. When you write an application and you, you're awarded a grant, you have to stay in those project parameters. So if it's speaking to a specific transportation project, it's a huge process to try to amend and move those funds to a different type of project. Roll call, please, Judy. West. Should have asked me first. <laughs> <laughs> Kramer, yes. Big enough? Yes. yes. Merrick? Yes. McDonald? Yes. Yeah. And Radke? Yes. Resolution adopted. So, Thank you. Judy, I will keep you abreast via email. Yep. And you'll keep me abreast. Um, just for everybody to know, um, the Driver Transportation Coordinating Initiative Board meeting is 1 o'clock on Tuesday, May 10th. They do meet in person at the conference center at um, the Michigan Works office off of Garfield Avenue. We also have a virtual option. So anybody can attend virtually um, or in person. I will be sending out the information, the agenda for next week, and I will have all of that information in there. Um, I will send out and include Judy on the calendar invite um, via Google Calendar so you can share that with whoever you want to duplicate it as necessary. Okay. Is that PPTI meeting? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, we the website while I was there I was uh, exploring that as well. Brent needed that link there and the information as well. It's in writing as far as the document. So, thank you, sir. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Mm -hmm. Next item on our agenda would be the parks and recs discussion. Andy, there's information in the board packet. Probably the last 12 pages. Randy starts. Could you just tell me what the point of it is on the Parks and Rec? I saw that there was wanted the um, 
playground equipment and matting and that. What's the deal? What What's going to happen? What's going on? Well, that That's depends on what the board decides. Um, when I when I ran for supervisor a while ago and lost, one of the issues was the park. Marv also had looked at wanting to do our park and some of the big on equipment stuff that's down there. And um, so I kind of took it upon myself um, to look into a little bit, got sat down with Marv and Judy a little bit and kind of got some ideas of what we could do. There's a, uh, a plan that was put together 20 years, 15 years ago to also include some improvements down by the township office of the playground. Um, some other stuff that's down there as well. Three years ago. 23 years ago that the board kind of adapted. Um, Marv kind of spearheaded that one. So I'm looking at we, we, the equipment that we have down at the playground is, is old. The replacement cost when the slide broke was expensive. They don't make it anymore. So it took some, um, some effort on Joe Johnson's part to get that replaced. So I'm bringing to the board some ideas on what costs would be. I went out and I, I looked at um, a bunch of different websites and got across one of the more inexpensive, actually the most inexpensive, that had quality equipment. I looked at some that were cheaper, but there was obviously reasons why they were cheaper when you looked at their at their specs on their equipment. Um, and I, I looked at getting a, a kind of a discount by buying the volume by doing both locations at the same time. Now we can, as a board, decide we don't want to do anything. We can decide we want to do the, the number one option or that we want to do the number two option. Or that's look not part with, with Sherry. That, that's not how Parks and Recs work. We, we don't just buy shit piecemeal. We're supposed to have a Parks and Rec committee that, that does their little thing and puts together a presentation and a plan for the next five years. And by the way, we need to buy new shit. And then we buy new shit. We don't just go buy new shit piecemeal because... Somebody brings it to the board. That's not how we do it. That's, that's my thoughts on it. Well, that's where I would come from when I started looking at this. We just decided on the pickleball down there. We just decided on the equip, the um, exercise equips and that. I was looking for the rest of the plan. And, and then this come up. Basically, I really didn't understand the... I did understand the different types of equipment and the tech, but the quotes all come from the same place out there, escaping that, and I didn't know what the plan was we were going for. What are, what are we doing? This is what I wanted. The plan was uh, most recently discussed and stated both at the Park and Rec back in 2015 to reiterate the discussion that happened. Uh, in 20, or 2002, which started off from 1998. No, this is for the, the park. Like, Our parks and rec was dormant for the longest time. We didn't really have a parks and group that was doing anything. In 1998, 99, 2000. No, no, even... Five years ago, six years ago, we got that stuff from Blair. That was like plopped on us. And that wasn't even part of the plan. I, you, you just got, it. hey, you want this stuff? Come get it. Right? Yeah, sorry, I paid a buck for it. Uh, but but that wasn't in their was, plan. It was in the plan. It started in 1998. This is, I'd use a four letter S word. This is stuff that we've been working on since then. Uh, it was Mark Palmer, Jimmy Pierce, Paul Biondo, Marvin Radke, Bill Kale. We've been saying we need to replace the equipment out there. We <laughs> had the license presented to us. 98. Again, discussed in 2000, 2002. I don't remember that coming in writing to our board. We, we talked about that one ancient thing that breaks the kids' teeth, and we all thought, leave it there. Yeah, and we did. And we rebuilt it it's stronger and better so it breaks more teeth. Uh, so this playground equipment, these improvements, uh, have been in the works since 1998, I can attest to. Okay, but what but the plan is, if we buy this gizwad, what gizwad gets taken out? Or, or does a gizwad get taken the, out? The, the, again, the, there's a detailed plan that, like Sherry said, I don't think it's, it's missing. I haven't seen it. 
i know we have a parks and rec committee i don't know what they do they never brought anything to us that i can remember in the last four years the pickle ball did its own thing and so did uh the disc golf disc golf no no that was uh quite a bit of discussion at park and rec along with disc golf you could talk to greg argyle and dave baldwin about that and their frustrations with my frustrations at that time uh, you could talk to the park and rec committee at that time we talked about pickleball we talked about disc golf we And I will call Parks and Rec saying, hey, we, we've studied this. Here's our five-year plan, and we want some new swing sets. I don't remember any of it. You don't remember Doc doing the Park and Rec plan on two occasions since 2016? No. So we have. It's on file with the state. Yeah. I mean, our, our, our budget, we, we throw in a pavilion. We were throwing in, you know, piecemeal stuff here and there maybe, but yeah. not, a, not a plan. I don't remember. Well, we've adopted the Park and Rec plan on a couple of occasions. I think Pat reminded us the last time we were off by a month and a half. Yeah. But that was a funding. That was a money only. There was no details in that. In the park and rec plan? Well, the the whole document? Got. Yeah. It, it, had a, it had a budget. All we looked at was like a one page, but a bunch of line items and some money. No. We, we did the whole park and rec. So Pat, you, you've been on this thing for the last eight years. Whatever. Is there such a, a, a long term plan that? Calls for replacement of equipment and this and that and walking and pavement and I haven't looked at it. The parks and rec plan that expired recently. I can't remember exactly what's in. You had to have one to get this to get the ball rolling for some more money along this mosquito trail and all that. Yeah, because in 2017 we adopted a park and rec plan. We held a couple of public hearings. It's right in the old town Jeff Paul meeting room. Steve Salzenberg was there, along with people directly now. Another advocate that also wanted us to add. Yeah, she's been people. gone four years. Kale's been dead eight years. Yep. And just like restaurant plants, since then it's helped, we do very little with it. We let we set it there, let it yeah, go. I don't mind spending all the money in the budget for playground equipment. I just want to see it, recognize it, maybe I'm just clueless. Of a, of a plan that we wrote down and it goes into the future. There's drawings in Mars office that I look at, that we look at. That's, I I've never seen, seen it. it. I swear I've never seen it. I'm going off what documents I've seen about. Well, like he said, it's on a shelf somewhere. But I I'm one who doesn't like making a plan, putting it on the shelf and letting it sit there. Our park is not in the best of, of shape. It's not the worst park I've ever seen. But it could use some loosening up. 2015, 16, he said it was. It was off then. He doesn't have And you've got much better. Are you going to try and do some grant writing to help finance this? Or are you looking to ask the board to include this in the budget? What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, we put $300,000 for the park improvement this year. Um, some of that money went to pick the ball, some went to. The exercise court. Um, I could write or attempt to write. I've written a grant before in my life, but I could attempt to write a grant for the Hershecker Foundation to get some money. Um, but I want to see before I spend a whole lot of time and effort going through all this. I want to see if the board even supported moving forward. And what happens if we don't get the grant from the Hershecker grant? Um, it'd be we're we're improving two parts of the park. But kind of the center attached or the attraction of the park is where the kids go and play. That's where I see when we're looking at the cameras that's where most of the activity is. Um well, I'm going to spend money, I want to be part of the plan. This is gonna replace what's down there now. Correct. It's gonna replace the park in the, the where the square blocks are for the Maddie. So steal the park.
then I want to know what the, the board saw was on the elastic play surface. Um, it's a significant amount of money more, but there's, little maintenance, there's much less maintenance involved in replacing you know, the part that gets kicked out. And, um, it just tends to look better for longer. But I wanted to get a feeling what the board wants to do on all this, but I don't want to go through all the steps, come back and have something say we never talked about this. <laughs> exactly. sad stuff over there and I'd like to spend some money to get the better stuff. I just want it to be coordinated and part of the plan. If we can do that, I'm, I'll, I'll see for the budget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
their deadlines for the MBA or trust funds or the passport. We're shooting for a spark grant. Yeah. <laughs> mediators. Well, there's a, in the MTA, there's no, no very bothered to apply to all these grants. You wouldn't apply for a three-year loan. Yeah. Well, the Sparks grant there was 400 or 200 applicants. 400 applicants uh, that totaled 290 million dollars, and they all only awarded 14 million 400 dollars, give or take a few pennies. And we are tier 10 out of 10. Our ratings were 52 out of 100 on one particular grant. So I mean, I'm hoping that Sparks grant will.
How are people even going to know where they're at? Just see them as you drive by? Or is there going to be some sort of a brochure put together for, for the public to pick up and walk and trails shown and that? Uh, at this point in time, DEA has criminal investigators that have township investigators. And there was a discussion at the DEA level, and also Pat and I talked about this, maybe having someone make an application to post a sculpture along the corridor of uh, Jay Maddy. Try to get them all out here? What's that? And then try to get them all out there? Along Jay Maddy Parkway and along 31th Street. Okay. Uh, as an interim measure. By the fire station. And then fire station, one down on Memorial Park. One at the park, one down at um, Tom's. Yeah, look, uh, we've where had. People are going to be. Yeah, we've had several inquiries. Hey, I'll post one. I'll post one. Meaning that they'll be there for three months or four months or however long. We will bring that back to the board. I'm trying to get these plans. But I know we have several along 31. Grand. For this year, current year we're in right now. 
right now. That's what we're looking at. I believe the standard of no is a budget, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, we had, I, I didn't know if that was part of this matching stuff where you pick a ball and the bid score it. And yeah. Yeah. Some of that was, yes. I Wait, right now you use 207000 
No, it goes under um, 724, which is FSA based on other contribution. And so the HSA mm -hmm. belongs in there too? Yep. So, uh, open, you know, we received this and we did it pledged it into black. And yes, there are some, you know, some grant money discrepancies in there, but it was also, if we didn't get grant money, there was no outlet. So, hopefully, that would be somewhat of a wash in that regard. So we've been running for the last two years and we've been running within 1%, half percent of our budget. So, we've been given accolades by trends in our auditing firm. Uh, so, this is the first blush submittal. collection, insurance collection, other transporting agency fees. Uh, we we kind of got a feel for that, that we're, uh, we're doing the right thing there? Yeah, uh, we're based on previous data. We're in the ballpark. I mean, population changes in Medicare reimbursements. Medicare has finally stepped up a little bit in the previous couple of years. Um, and they're starting to do some of that. Page nine, I mean, we want to look at the parks and rec capital outlay, uh, Andy. Well, but I guess 25 is kind of 
than our typical whatever placeholder. Placeholder. We, we really are on schedule to replace the metal with the plastic. We should boop, bump that up.
prisoners hanging in the forest for $200? Yes, they were. I think I found that to be illegal. I took some down too, so they brought me a bag and blankets. Bring your own chair.
happening with the budget was this baked into it. We basically did this, and then some of us wanted to stand alone, actually state them, whether this is official or the budget that's official. Remember we had that argument? Yeah, and so with this, if we do it, if the board desires, or the members of the board, we'll take this sheet here, because we already did resolutions for yeah, the elected officials. Yeah. Uh, and if all these other numbers, if everybody's a mean, that we can attach, you know, wage reference budget 22-23 instead of A and adopt that as part of our budget. So these would be the wages. So that we, the resolution the would be to incorporate this into the budget. The budget was created off of this. Yes. To link the two. Mm -hmm. All right, but we don't do that with you. Yes. Right. That's you just wanted to see if it pissed anybody off.
5.30. Sherry, I mean, I know you're not. You haven't looked at next year's uh, deadline for taxes yet? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's over taxes right now. No, I think Deanna would vote for He's not going to come anyway. Yeah. So Dave, Tuesday <laughs> at 530? Yeah. Judy? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, 